Remember those games we played as kids and now looking back saying, wow, that was pretty dark. Well, I got a whole 10 games for you guys today. I'm your host, Andrew, and today we'll be talking about the top 10 cursed children games you should never play. At number 10 spot, we have Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Blood. Ah, you thought I was gonna say it there, weren't you? Just so I won't be met with this malevolent spirit, I'm gonna hold off on that last word. Bloody Mary is common to almost all North American teens because at one point of our lives, our friends mentioned it to us and even dared us to play it. For most of us, to play this game, you will just need a dark bathroom and a candle. Once you're in front of the mirror with the candle, you must say Bloody Mary three times aloud. After the third chant, the apparition of Bloody Mary is said to appear in the mirror covered in blood, hence the name. Then nothing good comes from what happens next. From there, Bloody Mary may scream, curse, or in some cases, come out of the mirror to grab the victim into her world. Back in the day, however, this game was used for women to see the faces of their future husbands. But if they saw a grim reaper face instead, they would pass away. I guess we took the worst part of the game and carried it on in legend, because you would have so many people playing this game knowing you could see your future spouse. At number nine spot, we have Ring Around the Road. From what was thought to be an innocent children game with holding hands and jumping around with friends Bring her on the rosy, pocket full of posies. Was actually a game about the terrible bubonic plague The bubonic plague or black plague claimed an estimated 75 to 200 million people in Eurasia and North Africa. In terms of the song, a pocket full of posies refers to when people used to hide roses or other flowers in their pockets to mask the smell of decomposing bodies. And the line, ashes, ashes, we all fall down, refers to the cremated bodies spread all over the town in the form of ash. And finally, the end of the rhyme, we all fall down, meant that anyone who caught the plague would basically pass away or fall down. Crazy how we still play this game as kids, because when I did the research, I found that they even changed the lyric from ashes, ashes to a tissue, a tissue, because the people releasing them knew how dark the lyrics truly are. At number eight spot, we have Baby Blue. As most of the ones on this list, kids used to play this game in bathrooms when they wanted to try something other than Bloody Mary. Who are these kids? And I wonder how they grew up to be. To play this game, you must turn all the lights off and lock the door to your bathroom. Now stare into the mirror and hold out your arms as if you're holding a baby and say the words, Baby Blue, Blue Baby, 13 times without making a mistake. It's said that if you do it without messing up, you will begin to feel the weight of a baby in your own arms and you will slowly begin to feel scratching on those arms. Then the next step is crucial. You must toss the invisible baby down the toilet and flush it and run out of the bathroom as quick as possible because if you don't do it quick enough, a lady closely resembling Bloody Mary will appear to grab you. This would make sense since variations of Bloody Mary chant include Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, I got your baby. Maybe Baby Blue is her baby and they're somehow connected. I guess this ritual is the best way to get a two for one spirit special. At number seven spot, we have the Ouija board. We all know about this game, whether we heard it from a friend tempting us to play it or through online posts showing us its strange nature. The Ouija board at its base is a game with a wooden board showing all the letters of the alphabet, numbers, along with the words yes and no and goodbye at the bottom. These symbols are used to communicate with spirits from the afterlife and would become the main object used in horror movies to contact said spirits. In the second half of the 19th century, America got really interested in talking with the dead, so once this game was introduced, it became an instant hit product. Except after years and hundreds of thousands of people playing, people started to report bad luck and tragedies occurring after they played with the Ouija board. Many of these came from the fact they didn't say goodbye to the spirit before leaving the game, which is why some spirits latch onto others after this game. So be polite and don't forget to say goodbye. At number six spot, we have the Sandman. We have this on another list, but for those who don't know, to play the Sandman game, you need at least two people. One person lays flat on the floor while the other person sits beside them. The person sitting beside the player has to tell them to close their eyes and be sure to stay relaxed. Relaxed, which is kind of ironic since the next part has a person telling the other a scary story about how they're injured and they're cut open and filled with sand. Nothing relaxing about that. The important part about the game is that when you're talking about a body part in the story, be sure to touch that very exact body part. This means if you're touching the shoulder, say shoulder. When you're touching the chest, say chest. This is when the player will experience heaviness in every part touched since it's being filled with quote unquote sand. The scary part about this is that it's not your body being filled with sand, but instead you're being possessed by a spiritual entity. Once once this is finished, the player will notice their body is heavy and hard to move around. And this is when they must do everything in their power to keep moving and stand up. Because if you don't, the spirit will have full control of your body and possess you for the rest of your life. In the hump of our list, we have Concentrate. I remember many kids playing this game on the playgrounds, and now that I'm older, this game is actually one of the most horrifying on this list. It was mostly played as a mental simulation kind of game where we would start to feel and envision the things being said to us, hence the concentration name. Except the real goal of this game was to find out how you would pass 
pass away. To play this game, all you need is two people. The person standing behind the other is considered the guide, while the other person is going to be the one mainly playing the game. These chants are supposed to make you feel these physical sensations in sort of a mind manipulation way. At the end, you must ask the person what color they saw last. And these are the different meanings to each color. Red means stab, blue means drowned, yellow means poison, orange means burned alive, green means falling from a height, purple means suffocation, gray means a disease, white is old age, and enter into heaven, while black is die of old age and end up in hell. At number four spot, we have light as a feather, stiff as a board. 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 This was a common game played in North American sleepovers, and as shown in the video clip, one person will be pretending to be deceased, while the others lift them off the ground using only their fingertips. If done correctly, it'll feel as if the person's body is weightless, as if they're a hollowed out object. Except this game started off a whole lot different. Back in the 17th century, this game was recorded by English Parliament member Samuel Pepys, who recorded a time when he saw a group of young girls playing this game. But he stated it was a Christian blessing to protect people from the bubonic plague, or even demons trying to possess them. In other instances, it's been used for seances and other rituals involving contacting the afterlife. But in reality, this game is just simple physics. When everyone is carrying the weight at the same time, it'll be evenly distributed and be easier to carry. Except this game is still pretty creepy because the fact that you have to act the seas and the fact that the levitation part could be referred to as a resurrection moment since you are acting as a deceased person. Just creepy. All the way at number three spot, we have the fortune game. The fortune game, otherwise known in Japanese as Suji Ara. This is a game that needs some sort of crossroads, just like any famous soul selling, deal making story out there with the devil. But for this game, the crossroads signifies the two worlds colliding, the living and the dead. To play this game, you will have to have something to cover your face and find yourself a crossroad that is empty just so you don't come running back to me if you get run over. Once you're in the middle of the crossroads, chant Sujiara, 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 grant me a true response three times. And after the third time, a stranger is said to come from the darkness and approach you. From here, you must use your face covering and completely block your vision. From here, you might politely ask the spirit for a fortune for your future, where they will begin to whisper at you your fortune. This game was so popular for kids back in Japan that they even made little crackers with fortunes inside. So despite this game being well known, talking to strangers is definitely not recommended for children. At number two spot, we have Cat Scratch. This game is just creepy altogether. I heard this game for a short time and always wondered why people would want physical marks from supernatural entities. What is fun about that? Well, for those who don't know, Cat Scratch was yet another game kids would play for fun at sleepovers, but not me. I wasn't that type of kid. To play this game, you just need two people. You must sit on the floor while the other friend lies on their back with their head on the other's lap. Now the person sitting must rub the head of the person lying down while telling this scary story. The story goes, there was once an old lady who owned a cat. The cat was very nice, it meowed and purred. One day the cat got hit by a car and died. Cat scratch, cat scratch, cat scratch. The old lady got a new cat. The cat was very mean, it hissed and clawed. Cat scratch, cat scratch, cat scratch. One day the cat got hit by a car and died. The old lady decided not to get any more cats. Cat scratch, cat scratch, cat scratch. Once this story is finished being told, the person lying down is supposed to have a fresh red claw marks on their back despite them feeling nothing. Some say this is just a demonic ritual and these claw marks are actually associated with the devil disguising himself in this innocent looking cat game. At number one spot, we have the corner game. To play this game, you'll need a total of four people. Each of you will take your spots in each corner of a four corner room with your backs facing the center and be sure it's completely dark. One person will be a designated leader and they will stand into the middle of the room to start the game. Once the game begins, all participants must state their names aloud and count to three. Once the countdown ends, you must shift into the next corner of the room clockwise, which means that one corner will always remain empty. If the game is being played correctly, one person should go missing from the rotation and the empty corner should now have a shadowy figure in it. To win the game, you must not talk to that shadowy figure and only when all members recognize and chant that they all know that someone is missing from the game, that the missing person will appear back into their corner. To officially end the game, everyone must now say their names aloud and turn on the light. This is said to be a game where spirits play with you. It doesn't have too many dark implications other than the fact that you will witness your very own spirit, but other than that, the spirit just seems to be minding his own business. Well, these are the top 10 cursed children games in America. What do you guys think about next? Leave your suggestions of what we should do next in the comment below. Like and subscribe. I'm your host, Andrew, and I hope you have a scary day.